Hi guys, Keith Larkberg Farms. Uh, the audio in this clip was horrible. I could barely hear a word I was saying, but needless to say, I am not on the farm this week. I've had a lot of questions here recently about the side curtains and automating them on the greenhouse. And I put together two videos with a really good guide that help you wire it and have no problems with the sticking. So I want you all to check it out and I'll be back on the farm next week. Also, as a reminder, Every third Thursday of the month, we do a live Q&A to answer all your questions and talk about what's going on on the farm. That's the third Thursday every month at 5 p.m. Central Time. Also, don't forget to go over to ArkenbergFarms.com. Scroll down to the bottom, digital tools and training. Got a bunch of cool spreadsheets down there. And also for people out there that don't want to go through all the effort actually putting these things together because they get a little bit complex, I'm going to have pre-built kits available for roll-up curtains on your greenhouse and also for actuators for opening doors and vents and things of that sort. I'll have a couple different options down there. Head down to arkenbergfarms.com, scroll down to the bottom, digital tools and training. This is the motor I'm using. Got it off of Amazon. It's got a trolley. Fits on a three-quarter inch piece of conduit. It is roll-up motor and all that good stuff. The one thing to note is that the power is 100 watt and the voltage is 24 volts with 3.6 amps. So that determines the transformer you have to get for it. Transformer I'm using 100 watt 24 volt 2.4 amps, so it should have plenty to push one motor For my temperature controller I'm using a double L group T 152-C It is a single throw double pole or single pole double throw there we go thermostat so it'll actually switch the positive and negative so we can reverse the polarity I'll show you the inside of that here in a second this over here is just a junction box for power hookup later it just powers the converter and I just have a plug on it so let's plug an extension cord in for now powers it switch 24 volts into here this takes it positive negative when you adjust it, you hear a click, and then it clicks again. So that's my low set. That's off. And there's where my high set is. I can set that in accordance with what the temperature I want. I'll probably stick it around 80 to start with and work from there. So this is how it is now wired up. These wires at the bottom go out to the motor. These ones up here, it's kind of hard to see, are branched off the white line. I don't have much cord there. So I got two blacks coming off of one, two reds coming off the other. So, blacks up here, blacks up here, reds up here, reds down here. These are the ones that are actually switched by the switch in the controller. It goes from here to here. These go out to the motor itself. Originally I wired it with the positive and negative coming from the 24 volt transformer to the bottom two pins on the unit which is 11 and 31. So I'll have my positive path go to one side of the motor, my negative path go to the other side of the motor. When these both pop and now I've got the positive going to the other side of the motor and my negative going to the other side. So that actually reverses the motor because it's a DC motor. The issue I've been having is they're not popping at the same time. So what happens is that this pops over here and now all of a sudden I've created a short because this one hasn't popped yet. So my positive path comes up, comes to where they're tied together and then comes back down and causes a short in the uh, transformer. 
what happens is that these switches that go back and forth, when they get shorted out on that 24 volt uh, transformer, it actually causes them to stick on the inside. So then this sticks here, and then when this decides to switch back, or the other one finally goes and pops, works just fine. But then when it pops back, this one will not pop because now it has seized itself when the unit switched. In order to fix that, I've got to take apart the switch itself where all the pins are located on the back of the uh, controller pad. There's four screws. So you've got your spot where you hook all your wires in. There's four screws here on the corners. You take those out, and then there's two little metal switches behind it. Kind of look like this. There's a little pad here and a little pad here. These things go up and down. All you got to do is push down on it or pop up on it, and you'll unseize them. The way I figured out to counter that is, is actually hook it up backwards. So now I'm bringing my power in this side hooking to 34 and 12, which would be here and here. And my negative goes there and there from the other side, which is 32 and 14. Now, the worst that can happen is that if I have them pop out of order like this, now I've got a positive going to both sides of a motor. If the other one, if this one's here and then this one pops here, I'll just have negatives going. Running a straight positive or negative current to a motor will not damage it. It just won't do anything. As long as they are both off of the same initial power supply, it's basically like taking two of the hot wires holding your hand. It's not going to shock you. Two of the negative wires holding your hand. It's not going to shock you. But if you put the positive and negative together and touch, you're going to get a shock. So I hope this helps you if you've been having problems. The other solution I had for this, um, after talking to the greenhouse company that produces these as a uh, model they actually sell, is to use a 12 volt transformer. Apparently, when you get the short situation where you have your line coming in and one pops out of sync and it comes back down, so you short positive to negative, it's not strong enough to actually seize them together. So I've been told. But for now, I'm just running mine like this and it's been working great ever since then. Here's my control board. Got a little bit extra wire going on here. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it there on this side or if I want to move it back over here. Line goes out, goes outside to the greenhouse motor. Now I've mounted the roll up side curtain motor to the curtain onto his trolley which is on a three-quarter inch piece of gas pipe. It goes all the way up to the top. That way it can ride all the way up. It's got some limit switches down here on the end that you can set. For my purposes on this side, the red's the bottom. Green is how far it goes up. I'll show you how I wired it all up. Well, I hope you all liked the solar day. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, ArgenbergFarms.com, digital tools and training. I'll have some pre-made kits ready for building and ready to ship out. Thank you all. Have a good day.